of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, Will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? 
Suppose there were 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it for the sake of the 50 innocent people within it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to make the innocent die with the guilty, so that the innocent and the guilty would be treated alike. Should not the judge of all the world act with justice? The Lord replied, if I find 50 innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke up again. See how I'm presuming to speak to my Lord, though I am but dust and ashes. What if there are five less than 50 innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city? Because of those five? He answered, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. But Abraham persisted, saying, What if only 40 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it for the sake of the 40. Then Abraham said, Let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. What if only 30 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it if I can find but 30 there. Still, Abraham went on. Since I have thus dared to speak to my Lord, what if there are no more than 20? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. But he still persisted. Please let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least 10 there? He replied, for the sake of those ten, I will not destroy them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith and the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And even when you were dead in transgressions and the uncertain circumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, obliterating bonds against us with his legal claims, which was opposed to us. He also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. So, Tony thought, 
hmm, I know what I'll do. So he took the statue of his blessed mother, <coughs> blessed mother Mary, from his room, wrapped her in a towel, tied her up with string, and put her in the closet. That night he prayed, Dear Jesus, if you ever want to see your mother again, <laughs> you'll give me a new red bike. Well, can we pray like that? Now, this is a funny story. Or I won't tell you who little Tony is. But anyway, uh, <laughs> do we pray that way? When we think about it, we can easily slip into praying like pagans. So pagans back at the time of our Lord had all kinds of gods, the Greeks, Romans, and so on. Then they'd go to their different temples for a different thing. So this god was in charge of that and so on. And if you didn't make your offering count, so to speak, like the god didn't hear your prayer, but you just went to the next temple. Do we do that in a way? Like we act like pagans say, well, I only pray when I really need something. Then, do we get angry when we don't receive the answer that we want? I found people who have abandoned the faith because they prayed fervently. They didn't think they received the right answer, so they stopped believing. And then, also, I've known people who threatened, like, Lord, if you don't give me this, I'm leaving the church. We pray of people like that in our own families. So we have to remember that we're called to pray as a child of God. Think of our first passage from Genesis. Abraham lived about 1,800 years before our Lord. He was chosen by God to be the father of the Jewish people. God made a covenant with him, that bonding of life and love the sign of which was a physical sign, circumcision, a blood sign. But here we knew, or we know that Abraham knew he was a child of God. So in our first passage, when he's praying about Sodom and Gomorrah, he's interceding. And notice how he prays, too. He says you know, such things as, Lord, I'm just dust and ashes. That's very humble. He pleads, do not be impatient or angry with me. So he's really praying with that childlike trust. The Lord's very patient. He lets Abraham go through all this bartering in a sense, like, what about 50, 45, and so on? And in the end, we know Sodom and Gomorrah is destroyed. Did God hear Abraham's prayers? Absolutely. But God can't change people's free wills. If people want to persist in sin, so be it. We aren't puppets. We aren't robots. But we're programmed somehow. We make choices. And we face the consequences. Abraham knew, though, that even though Sodom and the war was destroyed, God heard his prayers. And God did what was right. Well, how much more should our prayer be fervent and sincere? After all, we are children of God. And more than Abraham, We've entered into the new covenant that's been made with the blood of Christ. So Christ has given us a whole new life. We are not victims of circumcision, so to speak, but rather we've been baptized. As St. Paul says in our second reading, rather than this physical sign, we have a supernatural action where God, through the sacrament of baptism, has recreated us freed us from original sin, infused us with sanctifying grace, that indwelling presence of the life and love of God. We become a child of God, also a member of a family called a church. So we should be able to pray them as a real child of God, trusting, just as Jesus says in the Gospel, that our loving Father is going to do all that is good for us. Well, with that in mind, the disciples asked Jesus, teach us how to pray as a child of God. To pray as you pray to your heavenly Father. We hear in St. Luke's Gospel, one version of the Our Father. We look at St. Matthew's Gospel, there's a longer version, which is really the one that we're used to saying. Jesus probably taught the same prayer in different ways at different times. But both of them 
we're really the same prayer, but it gets down to the substance. And think of this beautiful prayer. This is a prayer we ought to say each day. This is a prayer that needs to be memorized, of course. This is a prayer that needs to be prayed thoughtfully, thinking about it. It's a beautiful way to meditate. So when we look at this prayer, first of all, we're directing adoration, praise, love towards God, the Father. The Father here, in one sense, is a very formal term. St. Luke uses the Greek term pater. St. Matthew records the Aramaic term Abba, which is more the daddy kind of language. So here we have a profound respect for God as God, but also approaching this loving father as a child would. So we do say, hallowed be thy name. We respect God's name because we love him. If we love someone, we wouldn't use their name in vain, or as a curse, or as an expletive. We use that name with reference and devotion. An exorcist once told me that the devil and the demons always tremble and fear the name of Jesus. But when it's used in a vain way as a curse or an expletive, they laugh. Something to always keep in mind. Never should we take God's name in vain. But we do pray, thy kingdom come. Yes, we're called to live in that kingdom now. The kingdom of grace. The kingdom that is visible in the church. We also long for the kingdom of heaven. Never should we fear leaving this life. But rather, we look forward to being united in heaven with the Holy Trinity, the saints and angels. We pray, thy will be done. Not in the sense that like we're puppets, like God just is going to control us. But the fact that, as a child of God, I want to live like that child. I want to live a Christian life. I want to reflect that baptismal character, that seal that has been placed on my soul. This is why we need to know the commandments, but we need to know the teachings of the church. But as we know them, and we put them into action with love, they become natural. Hopefully, no good Christian is going to want to steal. So we always strive to do God's will. Well, with that praise to God and that adoration, we then make our petitions, just as Abraham did. He was petitioning Almighty God. So we pray, give us this day our daily bread. In one sense, that could be just whatever we need each day to sustain us. And think of this, because every one of us just has today. We don't know if the future is going to come. We don't know what will happen tomorrow. But we can say, dear Lord, this day, thank you, or this is what I need for my family, whatever. Food, clothing, shelter, each day. We can also pray for the future, in a sense, like if we need it an open job opportunity, perhaps. There's an educational opportunity, some kind of help. You know, dear Lord, help me in this matter. Please provide. Also, we need to realize, though, that God will always listen to our prayers. He always hears them. But we have to remember, he's God. He's going to do what the loving Father will do for us. So Jesus said, the loving Father's not going to hand his son a scorpion when he asks for an egg. He's not going to hand him a steak when he asks for a fish. He's going to give what's best. So maybe we aren't going to get the answer we want in our own mind, but we'll get the best answer. And later on, we may well realize that was truly the best answer. When our dear Lord goes on and he says, knock and it will be open to you, we might be knocking on the wrong door. But the Lord's going to open the right door for us. We may be seeking something, but what we're going to find is what is really good for us. So we always have to have that trust that the Lord will provide for us. Another point here is that the word daily doesn't quite capture the meaning. In the Greek 
text. It's ekousias, which means the super substantial kind of bread. Immediately we think of the Holy Eucharist. But we're praying for the Eucharist. Because with the Eucharist, we know Christ is dwelling in our soul. The Holy Trinity really is renewing, strengthening that sanctifying grace. With the Eucharist, we have the strength to face the day. There's the key. Because what comes next in this? Well, when our Lord prays, he says then that I help forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We seek forgiveness. So we pray for the forgiveness of our sin. We move to go to confession regularly. We also pray for the grace to help us forgive others. At times, we're all hurt. And that hurt can eclipse everything else in our lives. The devil wants us to hold on to that hurt so as to ruin the present moment. Forgiveness puts a limit on the sin. So we're called not only to seek forgiveness by God's grace, to humble ourselves, go to confession regularly, but we're also called to forgive. And then the very last part, that is deliver us from evil. Lead us not into, into temptation. Troublesome language. It should be better to say, do not allow us to enter into temptation. Do not let us yield to temptation. We all face <coughs> temptation. We face the occasions of sin. Let's face it. We live in a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. No question. Matter of fact, this is probably worse than Sodom and Gomorrah was. But we want to remain faithful. We need God's grace. So we pray for that grace that enlightens our mind and strengthens our will so that we can see what is the good to do versus the evil that needs to be rejected. We need to be aware of the occasions of sin and remove ourselves. We need to be aware of the temptation so that we don't fall to the sin. We reject the temptation. God doesn't force, doesn't tempt us. Temptation comes. But God permits us to go through temptation. God permits us to face the occasions of sin, really to strengthen us, to rely on his grace. And by seeing that grace work in our lives, then we actually become stronger. So this is how we're called to pray. My brothers and sisters, take time then, this day, to reflect on the Our Father. To say it, but to say it with real conviction, to say it with real meditation. Think about this prayer, but also pray for the grace to be a humble child of God. This is what we need, because we want to live life with the Lord, and know that he is with us. He is going to do what's good for us. He wants us to receive what is good and to succeed. St. Paul said, for those who love God, everything works out for good. That's the point. For those who love God, everything works out for good. May God bless you. Let us stand and confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, unsubstantial of the Father. Through him all things remain. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, 
Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, you said that we're two or more gathering in your name, that you'd be in their midst and hear their prayers. With this confidence, we offer these petitions. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For justice, security, and peace among nations, and for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, intelligence, and diplomatic services to make peace. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For the end of war in Ukraine, the withdrawal of Russia, and the restoration of justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith, and for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the safety of the construction workers and the success of our building projects, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our parish families traveling on vacation, they will be safe from all harm. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us. For our parish seminarians, Deacon Tony Bennett, Deacon Mike Nugent, James Joseph, and Gabriel Godet, and for Ann Whalen and Caroline Jones, hospitals with the Nashville Dominicans, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound, our deceased. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For living and deceased parishioners for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions, which we offer in quiet of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear all our prayers, even those prayers held within our hearts and to grant them in accord with thy divine will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Calling upon our Blessed Mother, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. <laughs>
offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs> similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, memory of me. The mystery of faith. Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain your, an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Agnes, with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Michael our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come.
blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to be under my roof. Lord, I am not worthy to be under my roof.
announcements. Our four box collection this weekend is for Birthright, an organization that helps moms in need have their babies. Youth group will meet this seven, this Tuesday at 7.30 here at the Parish Hall for the monthly Holy Hour, the opportunity for confessions, as always followed by social time. Religious education enrollment has begun, so if your children are regularly enrolled in the religious education classes, please check the website and enroll them as soon as possible so that we can gather the appropriate amount of material. St. Joseph's League meets this Thursday here at Parish Hall at 7.30, so all men of the parish are invited. Even if you haven't been before, you're welcome to come. We start with some social time, beer and pizza, and then we'll continue our discussion of Father Calloway's consecration to St. Joseph. So again, all men of the parish are invited. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass has ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection.